Well, welcome back everyone. This is the Ranger Stronghold Scenario Replay. This is your host, ID Jester. It is the Allied Turn 3. I've decided to go ahead and at least uh, see if the Americans can survive this third turn. Uh, with any kind of luck, they possibly might be able to survive. Uh, it depends on... Uh, the dice gods, I guess, and whether or not they're kind to the Americans. They have not been kind to the Americans yet throughout this scenario. The Americans have had very bad luck. Um, so hopefully uh, some of that will even out in this turn and they can uh, get a few things back going their way and then possibly um, possibly get a uh, some kind of defense going to be able to last a few more rounds. They've lost all their leaders unfortunately which means anybody that breaks now will have to wait to the Americans uh, turn before they can try any rally attempts. Uh, we got two broken units here. Fortunately if we can get one of these uh, we have a half squad and a full squad. If we get that full squad back up they have the bazooka. They might be able to take a shot at this guy here. Uh, we have another guy here with the bazooka. We have our last uh, full squad up here in K1. It's a long range shot. But uh, possibly if we can get a couple lucky results. We'll do that as half squad that we can start running around. Maybe causing some problems. But. We'll just see how things go. First thing we're doing here is the rally phase for the Allied turn three. Uh, so it's without a leader, they can self rally one unit. Hopefully, this unit in L8 will try and recuperate the uh, full squad who has a morale of eight, uh, plus one for the train, minus one because of self rallying. So it evens out. He has a plus four because he's still DM'd. And he rolls a six, so he is not successful. Um, and the DM counter does not go off because they're adjacent to a known enemy unit. So not off to a great start here. Uh, the return's done. We go to the mirror, uh, Germans rally phase. The Germans decide to uh, rally Q4. He is a 5 plus 1 for the terrain. And he's not self rallying because he has a leader in there. So 6 is his morale. And he makes it. So he is recuperated back into action. Not exactly what the Americans were hoping for. I believe that is all of the rallies that we have. So we will go on to the prep fire phase. Prep fire phase, well, without this guy being able to shoot, it all comes down to our N6 squad and what he can do. So we either have to decide to stay or run away. If we run away, anybody we or any space we move into will cause defensive fire. If he stays though, he might be able to get a couple prep fire shots out. Maybe uh, blowing up this tank with his bazooka. Uh, if he chooses to use his machine gun as opposed to his inherent firepower, he might get rate of fire, maybe damaging a few of these uh, enemy units, which could be rather helpful. Uh, but again, we could just try to run him away, but he just doesn't have any good locations. This guy up here, as soon as he moves away, uh, we might be able to move him away a few spaces. But he's got terrain to go through. Uh, with uh, two movement points to go into this J0 hex. Two movement points to go into I1. So he's not going to get very far. Problem is he has a sniper counter on top of him. He's got a minus two at, uh, acquisition target from the tank. So if he stays in this location, he's probably going to get severely injured. <sighs> if he tries to run away, he's not going to get very far. The tank's just going to roll up on him. 
So I think we're just going to try and go out with a bang here. See if the Americans can do some prep fire damage. And uh, see if they can bloody the Germans a little bit. At this point the Germans have been able just to steamroll right across the map without much apprehension. But if uh, the American player can suddenly get some broken units out there and some blown up vehicles and there's a slight chance they might be able to make it a couple more turns. So prep fire, first thing we'll do here is N6, we'll shoot his bazooka at 08. N6 to 08, it's two spaces away. If we look at our bazooka counter, two spaces away is a two hit of eight. Oops, so two hit of eight. We can try, uh, tank's not in motion, there's no hindrances, it's not the advanced fire phase, so I think uh, he hits it at an 8 or less. We shall see if he does. <laughs> oh, he rolls at 11, so he misses his bazooka shot, and in fact, he has run out of bazooka shots. So, that counter goes away. Uh, when it goes bad to worse. Um, so now it's a matter of does he want to use his machine gun uh, or does he want to use his inherent firepower? His inherent firepower is much better, but he would have rate of fire with the medium machine gun and he really needs to do damage to multiple people would be better than trying to focus in on one unit. We'll go ahead and just uh, we'll go ahead and just shoot at these guys that are adjacent to us here. So seven uh, doubled for point blank is fourteen firepower. Uh, no terrain, no leadership bonus. So fourteen will go to a twelve column, and no bonuses or penalties. Oh my gosh! <laughs> He rolls a six and a six. Good thing he didn't choose to shoot his machine gun, but um, he misses. So he's uh, prep fired. He's done, and I think the Americans are now going to be done. Um, yep, looks that way. Uh, might as well. Prep for this guy as well. Maybe he can do some damage up here to the north end. First thing we'll do is we'll take a random shot from our bazooka. Four spaces away. Not in motion. No terrain hindrances. Tank is normal size. So four or less. Four or less. He rolls an eight and misses. And then he'll shoot his inherent firepower. Seven. Uh, seven plus two for the building. Uh, six, seven, eight. Eight on the six column is a pin test check. All right, so. Oh, actually, we had some concealed units in there as well. So some of these will be at half firepower. I have to remember he rolled a six. Let me write that in my text log there so I remember what dice roll he had. All right, so. For the ones that weren't concealed, we have a light machine gun, 467, pin test check, he's pinned, and then we have a medium machine gun, 467, he is not pinned, and then for the concealed, it would be half firepower, which would be three and a half, let's go down to the two column, and you roll the six on the two column. Oops, wrong button again. Six on the two column. Uh, plus two is eight, so he misses the other ones that are concealed. So we got one pin result out of all that. Not what he was hoping for, sure. Move these guys in the bottom, I guess. So they're under the pin counter. Uh, so that's all for prep fire movement. Um, we might as well this one. Oops, two, three, four. 
we'll move there and movement is done defensive fire all right well uh, these guys will lose their concealments and create a big fire group here uh, we have four and five is nine ten eleven twelve thirteen and three and a half so it'd be sixteen and a half minus two plus one for the wood so minus one so thirteen and a half minus one I rolled a 6 on the 12 column, minus 1 is a 5, which is a 2MC. He has a 7 morale, 9, 10, 11, he breaks. And that will pretty much end the scenario with a decisive German victory. This guy's broken now. This guy's finished prep firing. Now we'll go ahead and finish up the German attacks down here. Uh, we have a big fire group here. That's going to be 7 doubled is 14. And 7 is 21. And 22, 23, 24, 25, 26. 26 total firepower. Um, plus one for the woods. So 26 is the 24 column. Plus one for the woods. He rolls a six plus one is a seven. Seven is going to be a three MC. Uh, he's a seven. Oh, he rolled a three. Oh, he's still holding on. Look at that. Three plus three is six. So he made it. Um, we now have the tank. The tank will shoot his main armament. Uh, 10 uh, plus 1 for being buttoned up. Plus 1 for the train is plus 2. He rolls a 3 as well. Uh, 3 is a hit. The 75L on the 8. On the 12 column is a 1MC. He needs to make another 1MC check. He rolls an 8 plus 1 is 9. And now he succumb, succumbs to the German uh, AFV. We go ahead and shoot his coaxial machine gun at him. 5, which will be a 4 plus 1 for the train, is a 5. 5 plus 1 is 6. Normal morale check. This is a morale now. It's an 8. He rolled a 9. So he has a reduces as well. And the scenario has come to a climax. I see no way the American can now win this scenario. He has broken unit up here, which needs to route away. He's got broken unit here. That needs to route away. When he routes away, he's got nowhere really to go to. These guys are here are broken. He's got no leaders to help rally. So we will call this video uh, scenario replay to a close. We will decide that it is a German Axis major victory. Major victory. And they have taken the hill with force. Fortunately for them, they had a lot of good dice rolling. The Americans, unfortunately, did not have very good dice rolling. Uh, the setup, um, like I said in the beginning of this series, I thought the setup uh, was going to be really difficult for the Americans, whether or not to set units up front or just position everybody in the back. Um, so it was I tried something with trying to slow the Germans down, but as you can see, didn't slow the Germans down for very long. Uh, the most devastating thing was having that uh, spot P3 become available with S1 uh, and when we shot and got a kill result and all by all the units in that hex by random selection uh, decided to uh, 
get killed and that kind of spelled the doom that started the doom or I should say it just continued the doom process for the Americans so unfortunately it wasn't very interesting and uh, close scenario it was more one-sided than I thought it was going to be uh, but hopefully we got to see how some of the vehicles work how the squad maneuvering rallying uh, the different phases of ASL and just give you a little taste I do have another scenario in mind that I'm contemplating I'm trying to decide on the next scenario I will play and hopefully um, we'll be able to get that series rolling now that this one has come to a rather disappointing and quick climax it didn't even make it halfway through the game so I hope you enjoyed this replay sorry again it wasn't as interesting and as close as scenarios I thought it was going to be uh, but it was more of a test uh, to see how well uh, everything plays on Vassal and uh, how well I can keep track of all the rules while also trying to keep track of all the different units and keep track of uh, who's moved who's not moved uh, keep track of the different phases uh, so playing a solitary game and trying to uh, follow along with the rules and play both sides and record and everything at the same time kind of difficult but I think uh, I've now got some uh, experience with it maybe we can move on to some bigger and better scenarios so once again I'd like to thank everyone that's been following this series along I hope you enjoyed our time together and look for another ASL scenario replay to come shortly. Until then, this is ID Jester signing off.